We are not alone, maybe. In an interview presented in a News Nation special report, Confessions of a UFO Hunter, News Nation special correspondent Ross Colhart spoke with Louis Elizondo, a former senior intelligence official and special agent who made international headlines when he revealed the Pentagon's secret UFO program in a bombshell New York Times story. During the special, uh, during the special Mr. Elizondo spoke of the government's knowledge of other life forms. Let's watch. We've been recovering spacecraft alien spacecraft. The United States has been involved in the recovery of objects, vehicles of unknown origin that are neither from our country or any other foreign country that we're aware of. Alien bodies, biologics. We as a nation have been interested in not only the vehicles themselves, but the occupants of these vehicles to include biological specimens. Aliens Non-human intelligences are real, and they have been engaging with humanity. Ross, we're not alone. We are not alone in this universe, and it is a simple fact. And the U.S. government has been aware of that fact now for decades. The full special airs tonight on News Nation at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Joining us now to discuss it all is a journalist who has spent a lot of time covering UFOs at News Nation, correspondent Brian Enton. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, I appreciate it. So Brian, News Nation really started reporting on the UFO issue last year with the David Grush interview. How does this new conversation move the story forward? Yeah, well, I think we get more details from Elizondo. Um, our, our big exclusive with David Grush obviously opened up a huge can of worms. You had the, the hearings on Capitol Hill and all sorts of um, new questions about what the government really knows. But Elizondo is sort of the original whistleblower. Um, he came forward years ago. He was actually running the program in the Pentagon that investigates uh, UFOs and says that he became just like so upset that they weren't taking these things seriously. He felt felt like he was being stonewalled, uh, that he left his job uh, and has now um, gone public with, with his story. And you can tell in the interview that he did with Ross, I mean, he's very, very careful about what he's saying. We saw the same thing with David Grush, is because both of them still hold these uh, national security clearances. They had the top level clearances. They have to be careful about what they say. A lot of what they say, they have to run through the Pentagon to see if they're uh, allowed to actually talk about it. So uh, Elizondo is careful, you know, he, he, you can tell there's more he wants to reveal that he won't. Um, but still, you'll see in the special tonight, it's, it's nine o'clock Eastern on News Nation. Um, he says a lot. Yeah, um, our, our viewers know that I have a lot of skepticism of these stories precisely because of the, yeah, the, the withholding that takes place from the people who are interviewed. They say they can't explain, it's a security, it's a clearance matter, it's a legal matter, but okay, but if you were the person to reveal where the, where the physical evidence, the physical remains of alien life is being kept, I mean, there, there's, there's physical evidence to the things they're alleging, not, not just that, right, that lights have been seen in the skies by various people, but that there's, there's some remains that's what, in, that's in a warehouse, that's in the possession of the government. Well, then my next question is always, well, where and why can't you tell me? Your, your reasons that you can't tell me don't seem as significant as the fact that if you did, if you did explain, this would be the most, you know, important revelation in all of human history and you're saying there's some technical legal reason you can't give me more that it raises my you know my bs meter yeah no i get it that's fair robbie and look i'm a skeptic too i think it's healthy to go into these stories as a skeptic just like you would um as any other story elizondo he does give more information about locations than other people that we've interviewed in the past, which was interesting. And you're going to see in the special, I mean, he talks about health and human services and says that they uh, had some of these, they call them biologics. So, you know, when you hear like they have aliens, you think like the movies and all of the little creatures that we've seen uh, on TV, but that's not necessarily the case. I mean, he talks about the fact that some of, some of these biologics may have come from beneath the ocean. They may not even be coming from outer space. Um, and a biologic, you know, it could be 
something as small as, you know, like something they found on a rock. It's just something that scientists have discovered is non-human and is evidence that there's something else out there. Uh, and in terms of locations, I mean, he does give a few. I mean, he makes clear that he doesn't know where this um, this evidence, these biologics are being held right now at the moment. But he talks about the Department of Health and Human Services. Um, and he names a couple of other U.S. agencies, too. He, he says that they've been passed around from agency to agency over the years so that different experts, you know, can study them, try to figure out exactly what these things are. Now, I have to say I'm a skeptic that aliens aren't real. I think it's more likely yes. than not that we're not alone in the universe. And there are so many people who have been whistleblowers who have risked you know, losing their careers, losing their security clearance over what they're telling the public because they feel it's so important. And Lou said he really stuck his neck out to share this story. He left his Pentagon job and lost his family home. Can you tell us about that? He was in the highest pay bracket uh, for for a federal employee. You know, he had he was making good living. He was at the top of his field in terms of being, um, you know, an intelligence officer. He was the head of the Advanced Aerospace Threat Program, which studies uh, UFOs. But again, he says he became so frustrated with the fact that he he didn't believe that the government was really letting them go far enough. Uh, and he felt like there was a cover up going on, which is something we also heard from David Grush that, you know, that that the government uh, that there's a secret part of the government that knows these secrets uh, and doesn't want them exposed. That whether that reason is is national security, that's something that Elizondo talks about tonight. I mean, you know, there's this um, this claim that you've got different governments trying to replicate the technology uh, of some of these UFOs for for national defense, which goes back to Robbie's point. I mean, that that could be one reason that it is all kept so secret still. Um, I mean, let's not forget. I mean, you had these hearings, real hearings on Capitol Hill. You know, lawmakers on both sides, Democrats and Republicans, coming. Forward Forward and saying we're trying to get information uh, and we feel like we're we're being stonewalled so you know is it really like aliens like i said from the movies and do they really have some crash craft we don't know but it does appear that there's something that they're they're keeping secret yeah the government withholding information is a totally plausible aspect of this we you know we know that the government for instance knows more about the origins of covid than they have disclosed even when everyone in Congress and the president vote for and sign a bill saying more disclosures here. We still don't get them because there's this level of knee jerk secrecy. So it, that that part is totally understandable. You brought up yeah, the flurry of, of hearings of congressional interest and activity that took place a few months ago as a result of a lot of the great reporting that News Nation uh, did on, uh, on, on this front. W was there any, you know, where was that left off? What, did anything come of that? I, there was, you know, a lot of frustration on the part of the, the Congress members um, asking questions and looking into it. Was there, was there some mandate for action that came out of it? So, I mean, the Pentagon now has a program where they say they're going to investigate um, anyone from within the government who comes forward and says that they have information about UFOs that that they feel like is being covered up. So that's something new. There's also going to be more hearings. Apparently, we've heard that for a while, but they've been in the planning stages. Obviously, there's a lot going on right now in politics and with, with the presidential election. So, you know, that may be part of the delay. Um, but, you know, if you watch the hearings, I mean, there's videos out there that the Pentagon has released themselves. I mean, there's the Tic Tac video. You guys have seen it. It's like that little Tic Tac looking object that the um, the fighter pilots were able to film out over the ocean. They saw it twice. They saw it one time off the coast of Florida, one time off the coast of California. And, and the Pentagon has released those videos and said, we don't know what this thing is. It's clearly not um, technology that the U.S. government has. I mean, the way that it's flying, you can tell it, you know, it descends like uh, 50,000 feet. I forget in how many seconds. I mean, it, it, it's it's not something that our planes could do. So, um, you know, they've released some of some of the videos themselves and, and said we don't we don't know what these things are. Uh, so, it, it, you know, it's interesting when you really start to think about it. So, Brian, that interview with Lou Elizondo looks like a bombshell interview. Can you give us a preview of what else we can expect in this special tonight? Yeah. So basically, you know, he goes through and again, he's got the national security clearances. He has to uh, be careful about what he can say. But he talks about the program that he was a part of. He talks about the way that he feels he was stonewalled. Uh, he talks about where he believes uh, the, the, the crashed 
craft, the biologics uh, were held within the government. He also talks about um, these private companies and their role in all of this. And he names names, which a lot of other people haven't done in the past. Companies like Lockheed Martin, Boeing. Uh, you know, what a lot of these whistleblowers say is that there's these private contracts with these companies over the years, which have helped to keep the secret and helped to keep it out of uh, the government, you know, the government being in full control and there being disclosure. So he talks uh, a lot about that. And, and he talks about what his family has gone through um, since he came forward, again, losing his job um, and sort of, you know, the implications of all of all of that. So the special is at nine o'clock uh, Eastern tonight, Friday night. And then we've got a live special, which I'm anchoring at 10 o'clock where we're going to have a panel of experts to kind of go over what Elizondo said, you know, uh, how believable is it, uh, that kind of thing. So it, it should be an interesting night. We Especially will if be you're watching. sick of politics by now. It's something uh, <laughs> you can get your mind off uh, the DNC for, for one night. Yes, uh, <laughs> this is a very refreshing uh, palate cleanser. Thank you so much, Brian, for previewing that for us. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, guys.